Hi, I'm Justina Keating. I'm a pediatric neurologist here at Mayo Clinic. At the first sign of a brain tumor, many times symptoms are very vague and things might start out with just a headache and intermittent symptoms of headache with vomiting and those can be very general and that might just be something as simple as a virus or uh, or struck throat, for example, can have headache and vomiting. But, um, but when symptoms persist and they're not getting better and they're re recurring with frequency, those are warning signs, especially if those symptoms are coming together with new onset of weakness, change in vision, change in talking or swallowing. Those sorts of things don't go along with just your average flu or cold um, and, and really require a little bit more investigation you know, starting with your pediatrician and then moving on to other specialists as needed. Once an imaging study has shown something that's concerning for a tumor, uh, it's uh, generally something very quick that we try to work them in um, as urgently as possible, um, hopefully here in clinic, but if the patient is so sick, they can be brought directly to the hospital. And, um, and we try to move through their evaluation uh, in neurology and then meeting the neurosurgeon and meeting any of the other team members as promptly as possible. Um, people worry that every moment is precious and in some patients they are so sick that they really need urgent care. Um, in other patients we have the luxury of some time to proceed with other studies um, and as amazing as it might sound they might uh, be able to go home in between their initial evaluation here and uh, coming back for surgery. Each case is on an individual basis. There's no one right way to do it uh, for, for each patient. With regard to treatment of brain tumors, there are many different treatments and that uh, hinges upon what sort of tumor type a patient has. It also can hinge upon the age of the patient at the time of diagnosis. Many people don't realize that there are a variety of different tumor types. It's, it, a brain tumor is not the only kind of tumor. There are multiple types of brain tumor and um, the uh, treatment may involve surgery right up front. In some cases, prior to surgery, there, there will actually be chemotherapy or radiation therapy before any surgery is concerned. But most patients will undergo a surgical uh, procedure. Following that, it's very important to have a, an excellent review in pathology to determine exactly what tumor type that is. And based on that pathological diagnosis, we can move on to a treatment plan. And that might require more surgery if there's been a subtotal resection. It may require chemotherapy or radiation therapy or a combination of both. When a patient is um, faced with the diagnosis of a brain tumor, the patient and their family suddenly meet a lot of new doctors, a lot of specialists that they may have never known exist. And many times the families ask the question, so what's your role? And as the pediatric neurologist, um, I like to meet the patients before surgery. And if they're stable enough that they come to clinic first, that's, that's always um, a pleasure to meet them in clinic, go over things very carefully. Um, as far as what they've been through already medically, examine the child very carefully looking for the signs and symptoms and any warnings of problems that might occur before, during, or after surgery, and just help to make the smoothest plan for treatment. Um, and I'm not an oncologist who writes chemotherapy orders. I'm not a radiation oncologist who provides the radiation therapy, and I'm not a surgeon but I interact with all those doctors and uh, help to make those decisions for the patient and help the patient and the family understand what's going on at different parts. We all work very hard to communicate and help the families understand, but um, I think it's nice that they have a doctor whose primary concern is the child's neurological well-being and helps them navigate uh, the treatment here at the hospital and many issues that go on outside of the hospital at school, at home, and in the community. So many of our children make fantastic recoveries and uh, go on to participate in so many aspects of life and it's, it's, it's a real joy to see that happen um, after having seen them at such a difficult time. I think that coming here to Mayo for treatment does offer some really great advantages. We have 
a huge medical center here with so much technology available and so many colleagues, yet there's that communication and collegiality amongst the caregivers um, that really benefits the patient and the family in getting through a really tough time as far as diagnosis and initiating treatment and then for sustaining that care of the patient, you know, a place that you can come back to and you feel like you know the people, they know you, uh, they're all working together on a team. So it's nice to have a multidisciplinary team, it's nice to be in a huge medical center where you have access to all the latest in technology and where your primary doctors have access to so many other specialists who they can turn to uh, if there's just one question or one aspect of the child's care that needs a little bit more definition or a little bit more kind of detailed care or um, management. We have such easy access to that here and it makes, it makes things less stressful both for the doctors and for the families. So I'm happy that we can offer that here. Receiving care at Mayo Clinic um, allows you to have access to both pediatric and adult care. So happy to have so many survivors of pediatric brain tumors um, that do still continue to need to be looked after by a neurologist and by other members of the team. And nobody's going to understand that patient and that patient's disease and treatment um, better than those folks who are taking care of the children with the disease. At the same time, once they become adult, there may be some other medical issues or aspects of their care that need that adult perspective, and we've got, we've got that here. We've got those colleagues that we can turn to um, and continue to be their primary neurologist or their primary surgeon, um, but still within the setting of excellent adult care too. And so I'm very excited that that's an opportunity we have for our patients here as well. As a pediatric neurologist or anyone in a pediatric brain tumor team, uh, you have to be an optimist and um, you have to always have hope for the future. And I can definitely say looking at uh, the changes I've already seen in the course of my career and looking back on what my mentors uh, dealt with early on in their careers and the successes they've seen in treatment of patients with brain tumors like medulloblastomas, germ cell tumors, um, astrocytomas. It's so exciting to see the progress that's been made in so many ways and exciting to think forward to what will we be saying, you know, is kind of new and different in the future and things are changing all the time and we've got uh, so much to look forward to in this field and uh, each patient participates in that in, in their way um, and we're just always hoping to improve. Each patient that we see we hope is, is going to have the op opportunity for even better care than those that came before them.